and welcome to Elderhood, Aging Gracefully. My name is Larry Grimm, and I am so grateful to Think Tech, Think Tech Hawaii for this opportunity to share with you the background and uh, foundational thinking of the coaching that I do for elders in elderhood. Um, I have the approach of aloha. Aloha to all of you. Welcome. We're here in Hawaii and Honolulu and experiencing a lovely, wonderful day again in paradise, as they call it. And, and it's wonderful, great to be able to share that with you. Aloha means, really means to breathe, breathe together, to share a, a common breath. And certainly we uh, are all linked together in this world in that way. And the internet gives us a great opportunity to experience our connectedness, perhaps developing a new consciousness, actually that embraces all of us and surrounds the world. So thank you for coming. You are simply friends whom I have not yet met, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, in my elderhood teaching, I'm also, a, I do two hats here. One hat is that I am a, I am a, uh, a chaplain, a spiritual care provider for the Hospice Hawaii, which, not Hospice Hawaii, for a Bristol Hospice in Hawaii. And uh, I love, love this company. We really do live out our tagline, which is to embrace a reverence for life. And we serve families and patients in their homes and facilities across Oahu. And I, you can find out more about us at, at Bristol Hospice Hawaii-Hawaii.com, Bristol Hospice-Hawaii.com. <clears throat> and I welcome any questions that you have. I'm also serving as a as a life coach, my coaching is focused on elderhood because I think I have the best, uh, I have something to offer there. Personal coach for life and faith in elderhood primarily. And my phone number is there on this lower third that you saw come up there. <laughs> and I certainly welcome any calls that you may have to inquire further about, <clears throat> about elderhood. Elderhood for me is like childhood, it's a stage. I'm treating it like a stage. <clears throat> we have elderhood. <clears throat> we have our uh, adolescence in which we grow into adulthood. And then now we have elderhood. And we have, elderhood has been somewhat neglected in the, among the intellectual community until recently. In mid-1990s, the term elderhood started coming into view with many, many books being written about it, many interest, much interest in it. And, um, it has continued to be of interest to me as I have worked with aging population. We have over we have two hundred and fifty thousand Hawaiian citizens over sixty five. That's a quarter of our total population, just about a quarter. So we are definitely a people, and you only need to look around as you walk down the street to realize this, or or know people in your neighborhoods that are uh, in this category of sixty five and over. And I have observed that there are five spiritual tasks in our elderhood experience. These are tasks that come up and sort of ask for our attention. And if we give them our attention, pay attention to them, then we can make our elderhood real and wonderful. The first task is grieving. We do more grieving than we thought we might do. We've lost, we experience loss. The, we experience change and trans, sometimes positive change, but even in positive change, there's a leaving behind something else. So, so grief is part of our life in perhaps a more prevalent way than ever before. We, we engage in sorting out our stories. We sort out our stuff. I don't know how many people I've heard say, man, how did I, gain all, how did I get all this stuff? But every part of this, every stuff you have represents a story. And what do we, part of what we do is sort out our stories. <clears throat> what are the stories we want to keep because they help, they are part of who we want to be today? What are the stories we want to discard or perhaps change? And Mary, my guest today, and I'll introduce her in a moment, is here to help us look at the power of story. The other three, as you can see on the, on the list here, are forgiving, um, forgiving, Pre pre uh, preparing and letting go. Mary Steck is a certified transformational health coach. 
and flew in from California to be on my show today. And so I'm very grateful to introduce you to Mary Steck. Mary, welcome. Thank you so much, Larry. I'm so pleased to be here. You know, I, I somehow fell upon your show while I was on my own Facebook uh, fun. Yeah. And I just, I just, you just stopped me and I thought, this man really has a handle on something that's very important, and that is elderhood. Well, thank you. And the choices we have and the choices we can make to make our elderhood as dynamic and vibrant as possible. So I'm very pleased and honored that you would have me here. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Thank you so much for making the journey. For it's, becoming not a, a... <clears throat> it's not a bad place to visit, for sure, is it? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all a bad place to visit. So the topic today is sorting out stories or the power of story, and um, I am convinced that story, stories we tell ourselves about ourselves influence the choices that we make all through life. And I'd like to have your help today looking at the power of story, and not only the power of story uh, all through our life, but also in terms of elderhood and how those stories may be impacting some of those uh, decisions that we face in elderhood. So in your coaching, have you seen the power of story? Oh my gosh, you know what, as a coach, <clears throat> the first thing that I do is called a health assessment. And in that, I am looking for and digging into finding the story, the why. Why does someone want to get healthy? Get off medications, reverse diabetes, and I see so many stories that people are living through and with in, at, at any age, at our age particularly, that we hang on to. So my work is to um, sort of encourage them to stop believing their old stories. You know, our stories begin when we're very, very young. Perhaps we don't feel nurtured enough. And that sort of settles into our subconscious. So we are always on the the search to feel nurtured, and a lot of people um, actually go to food for nourish, nurturing. And that's when eating habits uh, start developing and addictions to food actually be, and begin. And they're really developing um, around a story that is uh, one that we've, we've accepted and somewhat taken on, which is not necessarily a nurturing that's correct. That's correct. Um, for instance, um, how many times I, I heard a number last a few weeks last week it, that a child hears the the word no five thousand times by the time they're five years old. Wow. So we're creating stories in these people, these children that will carry them through their whole life. Um, the clients I work with come with stories like, well, my family is obese, therefore I have to be obese. Yeah. It's my family story. And I'm here to tell you it's not. Yeah. That my mother always said, Larry, you just have big bones. You know, look at this. Your, <laughs> your wrist is so big. That's, that's why you're a chubby boy. <laughs> that's not necessarily true. The, <laughs> the, the percentage difference between skeletal frames is so small. Really? But people buy that story. So those old stories, <clears throat> are, we wear them as baggage. And we live through those old stories, limiting ourselves to our vibrancy. Mm -hmm. So I have, my family is obese, therefore I have to be obese, or I'm, I can't do, I can't not be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so limiting. Our um, diabetes runs in the family. Do you know that diabetes is now uh, taking uh, a life every seven seconds in every our country? Every seven seconds? Obesity I'm... is now considered the number one cause of, of preventable death in the country. Oh uh, it has replaced smoking. Luckily, smoking has dropped away, which is really good news. But right behind it is obesity. And so much has, of this has to do with old stories. I'm not good enough. Therefore, food nurtures me and it makes me feel better. Yeah. Do you remember when you went to the doctor as a child mm -hmm. and you were really good at the doctor? And what did the doctor give you when you left? Candy. Candy. A lollipop. I was brave. And so when I'm brave, I'm going to, I'm going to reward myself right. with sweets. Or when you fell down and you skinned your knee and your mom wanted to make you feel better, what did she give you? 
Yeah, so sweet. And so when, so the, the belief is when I'm hurt, mm -hmm. food makes me feel better. You see, so that's all seated in the subconscious. Um, even when, you, you know, you do great things, what do you get? A big birthday right, cake. Right, right, right. So, so many stories are tied into those, <clears throat> those kind of... Uh, Mary, it, addictions, the trouble with addictions is they work. Uh, for a short time, for that moment, they work. And I uh, self-medicate myself with alcohol or with drugs or with food. And, and it does. It does calm. It does bring pleasure. But, that, but the costs are so great. That's right. So, the, so we, we um, use a system called <coughs> Stop, Challenge, and Choose. So if you're subject to wanting immediate gratification, like that piece of cake or that alcohol, I'm not opposed to drinking. I'm, I love wine myself. I, mm -hmm. I'm not here saying don't drink. And I'm also not here to saying don't ever eat a piece of cake again. But, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, what I'm saying is that if you know you can make a choice, is this serving my, my life? Is this choice or is it hurting? Is that cake? <clears throat> Good for me, or in the long run, is it going to hurt me? And then you stop, and you just analyze where you are, and you make your choice. Stop, challenge, and choose. And that's for food, for anger, for depression, for whatever happens in your life. Do I, where am I? Do I want to stay here? And how do I choose to be different? Okay. So we're always in control. Mary, well, I have a question. What's the difference between the story and the narrative? Oh boy, the story is what you believe. The narrative is how you express your belief. Mm. Is that is that hit home for you? Narrative is is. It seems to me that that's accurate. The narrative is how we got to that belief. The story, the narrative, is about an incident or an event, out of which we abstract <clears throat> a story about ourselves. <clears throat> right. So when, I, when, when little Johnny cries and didn't get nurtured, then his, that's the narrative. narrative. And the story is, I'm not lovable. Yes, yes, yes. The, the generalization then that's applied. No one self. will love me. Yep. I'm yep. not good enough. So we grow into this. We grow through our lives, and it affects our lives throughout our careers, throughout our family life, our parenting, and into elderhood. because. I, my story is this. Um, I found this program when I was 69 years old, four years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm a 73-year-old proud person. And um, I, my story was that I believed that, that the aches and pains and joints, joint pain I had had to be. And I decided that that's not going to be my story any longer. And I went on this program and found complete freedom because... You don't have to be 73 or 74 and live with pain. Uh, it doesn't, it's not part of getting old. Mm -hmm. um, so I found freedom in that, and I, that's why I want to pass that on to anyone I can. Part of the story of aging is that we're all just going to become decrepit, and I want to fight that. I mean, I want that not to be your story. And we will look at some stories when we come back after a short break here for Think Tech. Aloha, my name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m on ThinkTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo.
Hi, welcome back to Elderhood, Aging Gracefully. You just aged one more minute, and I hope you were <laughs> graceful in your doing it. <laughs> we are here with Mary Tech, certified health coach, transformational health coach, and she has flown in from California to be on the show with me and to talk about stories and how stories influence, power of stories to influence our choices. And uh, we take a look at those stories. Do we want to save them? Do we want to throw them away? Do we want to change them and rewrite them? So, Mary, you were about to treat us to your own personal story. My own personal story. Well, as I said before, I found this when I was uh, 69. I was a cooking instructor, and I was asked to design classes for, for clients, and I, didn't, I couldn't be inauthentic, so I said, put me on. <clears throat> I didn't think. But at the time, I have a three-level house, and I couldn't get myself up and down my eight steps without pulling myself up and supporting myself down. And my hands were, I was, I had inflammation from head to toe. My hands were career ending. I couldn't function in a kitchen. And, um, and this was due to the, ex, ex, the, the weight that you were carrying? I didn't carry that much weight. It was just, um, I was eating the wrong foods. Inflammation. And I was believing my own story. You see, when you believe that when you, this is a before and after picture of me, um, I believe that I had to be old and, and, and hurt all the time. And then when I dropped, I dropped about 14 pounds, but I dropped about 30 years. Ah, you, you see, got younger. I got younger. <laughs> and so much so, some friends of, of mine were in Mexico and invited me down, and they decided to go out to one of the ancient Mexican pyramids. This is a rendition of the one that I, I, we went out to see. And my friend went up to the top, and she turned around, and she knew that I had such knee problems. And she said, I'm so sorry you can't see the view up here. It's beautiful. And um, normally I would have a, a music cue <laughs> because I looked up at her, and I said, watch. And that's when Rocky's theme comes. Uh -huh. And I went up like Rocky. And her mouth dropped open. And, and I, I was elated, but I got to the top and something really big happened to me. I, I not only realized that, that we don't have to become old and aged, but I also remember this, my own story when I was 11 years old and my father experienced a massive heart attack. And he was brought home and put to bed. They moved all the furniture out of my bedroom and moved all the equipment in, which was really scary at 11. And they put him to bed for a year. And during that year, I, I made deals with God for a year to save his life. And mm -hmm. his, last, his big wish was that we would, he would live through Christmas. And he did. And sadly, he died the day after. Oh, my goodness. So as I was standing on the hop, top of that pyramid, seeing show the a, pyramid again, would you, Eric? a complete new life, go ahead and show <clears> the pyramid, <throat> I looked around and I said, I, I, no child shall lose a parent or a grandparent or an aunt or uncle to preventative disease under my watch. This is not going to happen. So it became my mission. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wonderful mission it is. And, and thank you so much for being focused on the story. I, I have, uh, have you ever heard your clients come in with a story that says, I always do such and such? Sure. I always finish the cake. I can't eat just a little bit of ice cream. I finish the whole gallon. I always eat the whole gallon. I always eat the whole gallon. I always fall. Mm -hmm. I always fail. So we dig in to find where that came <clears> from. <throat> where is that in the psyche? I am not good enough. I can't prevail. I can't be successful. And if we can dig deep enough to find that, that story and that why you want to change it, yeah. that's the secret. Because when things get tough on the program, and sometimes you, you know, people want to have that candy, and that's their choice. But then we take them back to their why. Why do you want to get healthy? Do you want to, be, do you want to play with your grandkids? Do you want to see your grandkids grow, yeah. graduate, get, you know, yeah. get married? Yeah. So, it's, yeah, and I have wonderful stories. I have a friend who um, I'd like to share another story with you, if that would be all right. Just let me say one thing before and share with the viewers that if, 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 if you, when you find yourself telling your stories about yourself, when you say, I always do, and it'll roll off the tongue just so smoothly, and you'll think, oh, it's just a matter of fact. But it actually reveals 
that story that you're living by. And, and if you'll be alert to that, um, you, you'll be, be aware of that that's a powerful story for you. It is powerful. And you know, there are exercises <clears throat> to change those stories. Positive affirmation, mm. I am healthy, fit, and strong. Uh -huh. And if you can repeat that over and over and really sub, just put this in, that into your emotional body and, and speak that from your emotional self. I am healthy, fit, and strong. I am vital. Yeah. I love life. Then that's going to tip the scale of that, of that belief system in the subconscious. And your serotonins will start being generated and it'll start mm -hmm. feeling good rather than the, the cortisols that run through your body when you're feeling those negative feelings about yourself. That is so important, Mary. And uh, neurolinguistic programming says that we, like a computer, we program our subconscious mind Absolutely. with our conscious mind. And uh, what we've been living by, or the program you've been living by, and that I've been living by, I'm going to be a big guy, and I'm going to conquer my father, <laughs> or protect right. myself from my father. Right. Um, all those stories, when, when, when you hear them and uh, uh, are in our subconscious mind, it can be changed. It can, and we have tools. Uh, we have this, our workbook, which is called a life book. It Excellent. looks big, but only a, day, a page a day. And this starts out by, all you do is you put your name in the, in the front cover. This is, <laughs> this is going to be Larry's story. Yeah. And then you just do a couple of pages a day, and this starts changing your story. This will take about a year. There are tools that we offer to would you share some examples of people who have rewritten their stories oh, and the sure, impact it's had on sure. them? Sure, sure. I've got <clears> one <throat> slide coming up who's a dear friend of mine. Her, her name is Dee. And uh, Dee and I have known each other for quite a while. And Dee was at, at 411 pounds. She's one of five, either five or six children. Her one brother is, was at 500 pounds. Her sister died in her arms as an obese person, wow. died of a heart attack. Her entire family are, are morbidly obese. She was in a wheelchair. She could barely stand when she decided to do this program. And um, she, she just decided to change the, the family story. She said, I am not going to live the way my family has lived. In fact, I'm going to live. She just lost another, another brother last year uh -huh. to obesity. So she went on the program, and I was honored to be her coach. And two weeks after she was on, she called me one morning, and she was crying. And I thought, oh, gosh, what's, you know, my old story is what have I done wrong, <laughs> right? right. Uh-oh, what have I failed to do? Yeah. So I immediately went there, and she said, Mary, I sat on the side of my bed, and I tied my own shoelaces for the first time in 15 years today. Wow. I cried. Wow. Uh, and we cried. Wow. And this is what I get to do every day of my career, mm -hmm. is changing people's lives and bringing them back. And it's the most wonderful thing. I have to say she's lost over 217 pounds. Wow. She's now riding a bicycle. Yes. And uh, her life is completely transformed. She gave up the old story. You see. And that life book in the program helped her rewrite a new story mm -hmm. about who she is. That's right. And how she's going to live her elderhood. That's right. She's entering elderhood gracefully with joy and vitality. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm blessed to see this happen every day. It's wonderful, Mary. It's those kinds of success stories that uh, really do inspire. Uh, one of the things that I'm aware of is that we have studied and studied and studied the problems of our lives. And we're really quite good at analyzing problems. But we aren't so good at analyzing solutions. I'm going to people that have succeeded and saying, what did you do to become such a great success? And that's the focus that I want to have in my counseling, in my in my work in uh, right. personal coaching for life and faith. And, you know, knowing that there are tools available, you know, it's one thing to say, change your story. <clears throat> just, just change it. Right. Like Bob Newhart, just stop it, right? <laughs> I love that. Just stop it. One of my favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the fact that you're uh, able to deliver tools uh -huh. that will work. Yes. Cognitive proven. tools, proven tools. Gives, gives hope 
to those people who are struggling and feel hopeless. You don't have to buy into a hopeless story, you right. guys. You don't have to buy into old age and hopeless stories and limited thoughts. You don't have to. Yep. I am here to tell you that life is miraculous, and yes. Larry Grimm is going to be able to <laughs> bring you to that place. I want you all to know that you have access to some uh, other stories like this on my Facebook page, which is Facebook, um, Personal Coaching for Life and Faith. And, oh, I know, just too good looking. Right there is one up there, Eric. Thank you. Um, a woman who has a tremendous transformation. And uh, you can see that it's... Um, See her, her details there. What's, what jumps out at me, Larry, is the look on her face. Tremendous change. On one, one of the shots, you can see the sadness. And when people break through that, then the glow and the, it's like coming out of a cocoon. Beautiful. I love that image. Mm -hmm. I love that image. Mm -hmm. Well, as a chaplain, I do, <clears throat> I do work, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the privilege of working with people who, who are at that, time of life when disease or, or aging process has taken over and, and uh, most of my clients and patients are in their 80s and 90s in the chaplaincy work that I do. And uh, you can tell when some of them have been strong all their life. I mean, they're, they have come in with vitality, made some good choices. Um, so I, I'm not interested in keeping you alive into the hundreds, although there are those like Deepak Chopra who said our bodies can live until they're 120 if we just believed it. We don't believe it. So I give you the opportunity not to be decrepit. And in fact, uh, I am going to enter the program, which Mary represents. And every couple of weeks, I'll be here. And you can see, if you join me every couple of weeks, 2 o'clock on Tuesday, Elderhood Aging Gracefully with a, there it is, thinktechhawaii.com. You can keep me on, keep me accountable and see how my, my dragon will shrink a bit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again so much, Think Tech Hawaii, and thank uh, for, for your excellence in providing this opportunity. Mary, thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. For being a part of my show. Thank and you. Appreciate coming out that. to give us some inspiration. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, and <clears throat> Hawaii is, I lived here for a little while. It is a second home for me, so thank you so much. You're sure welcome, and I look forward to your return, and uh, we'll welcome you again. Thanks, Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, thank you to all of you for viewing. And please feel free to contact me. Uh, my phone number was on the screen here a minute ago. And there it is again. And I will respond gladly. Aloha.